Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and there is a block that is timeless or let's say she is timeless. And her name is Sunbonnet Sue. Now she's often gone by Sunbonnet Baby, Dutch Doll and Bonnie Bonnet. Sunbonnet Sue was born sometime in the 1800s and became quite famous in the 1900s because a book was written all about her. Bertha Corbett wrote a book called Sun Bonnet Babies and it was a child's book and that really made her quite popular. She became very famous in the 1930s. This is the time of the Great Depression and she became very well known in that time. She was a wholesome, good-natured troublemaker and that reminded everyone of simpler times and fun times. She also became so famous that they've had cards, dishes and all sorts of merchandise done in her manner. She of course is known from her bonnet. She has been in many many different positions where she's smelling flowers, carrying flowers, flying kites, sitting, standing, walking and even being seen from behind. You can change the shoes, the dress, the bonnet to a hat. The only thing that is not changed is you do not see her face. And that's what makes this block so much fun. I've had these blocks for over 15 years so I guess it's time that I turn it into a quilt. The block themselves are nine and a half inches so they're going to be finished at nine inch blocks. So in this video I'm going to show you how to make the block and then put it together with a secondary block. I'm not able to use this exact pattern but I will put a link in the description to a pattern that you're going to be able to use which is very similar to this original one. And there's many different ways that you can applique her onto the background fabric. But for this video I'm going to show you the way these blocks have been made. So with this pattern we have her shoes, her dress, her bonnet, a little tie for the bonnet and her arms. So we have an arm and a little hand. These broken lines are just placements of ideas on where you can place the hat and the feet and the arms. But it doesn't mean you need to do them in these locations. She can be dressed and put in any position she wants. So let's start by making a sunbonnet sue. These blocks were made with a fusible interfacing method. I will be using this lightweight fusible interfacing which means on one side I have a very smooth side and the other side is a little bit bumpy and that bumpy has a fusible on it. And we get to trace the pattern right on top of this fusible interfacing. Now this is not a fusible web where you peel off the paper and you stick it on. This is an interfacing so it stays on after. The fun thing about using this method is we do not need to reverse the picture. I need to trace the picture on top of the fusible interfacing. But I do want the bumpy side down so I'm going to trace on top of this smooth side. I'm going to start with the three main pieces and then treat the hand slightly different. So let's draw these three main pieces. You do not need to use something as dark as this. I just would like you to see it. So just trace the pictures or the shapes that you want on top of the smooth side of this fusible interfacing. And I can cut these out so that there's lots of space all the way around. What is important is that we start with our fabric well pressed because we cannot press it until after we have this all put together. I'm going to do the bonnet in this really fun summer print place that bumpy side or the fusible side on top of the right side of the fabric. And this is fun because we can see right through this which means we are going to be able to place this anywhere we want. For the bonnet all of the edges need to be finished. So what I need to do is stitch with small stitches all the way around my traced line. So I have the glue and the right sides touching. Once these two layers are stitched together, 
we're going to be able to cut a quarter inch all the way around the outside. You can use regular scissors and you can also use pinking shears. You want to cut anywhere between a quarter of an inch and an eighth of an inch all the way around your stitching line, which happens to be the line that you drew. From here, we need to turn this right side out. So pull this interfacing and the fabric away from each other and place a little cut in that interfacing. Be careful not to cut your fabric. Now we can turn this right side out and poke out all those corners. Once it's turned right side out, we're going to have the good fabric on the one side and that adhesive part of that interfacing on the other. We need to do this to all of the pieces. For the dress and the shoes, I can leave a part open along the top because the bonnet is going to cover the one section and the dress is going to cover the top of the shoes. So I'll be able to treat this a little bit different. Stitch your three main lines and leave an opening. With only those three sides stitched, I'm going to be able to just turn this right side out. I now have the skirt portion done. I'm going to do the same thing for the shoes. I find those small stitches set at a number two makes it very easy to go around these small curves. And if you happen to poke through the back of this interfacing, it's fine. It's only there to help you turn this right side out. And this adhesive is going to stick onto the background fabric. I like to sew my arm and hand together first. Now when I trace this out, I'm going to trace it out as one piece. We can draw a portion of the hand and then slide the hand down until it meets the next portion. We'll be able to use that overlapping and placement as a guide and lay it on the fabric. So I already have my hand and that sleeve put together. Now I can stitch all the way around. This arm with that little hand is a top piece, so we will need to cut a little slit in the back of that interfacing and turn it right side out. I now have that little arm and hand done, the skirt's done, shoes and bonnet. For the little ribbon, I'm going to use a piece of ribbon. We get to fuse these onto the background fabric. The background fabric is white in this case and it needs to be a nine and a half inch square. The first thing we need to do is add her shoes. And I'm going to have her sitting down. Fuse down the bottom pieces first. So in this case, it's going to be her little shoe. We want to make sure that that interfacing is all tucked to the inside and then we can just fuse that piece right on with the iron. That fusible web has stuck that right onto the background fabric. Now we can hand applique around, machine applique, do a decorative stitch, and that finished edge is always going to look like we've turned the fabric underneath by hand. I'm going to do a very small top stitch row all the way around. Once her shoe's been put on, I'm going to be able to put her dress on. I'll be able to fuse this dress just like I did the shoe on the background fabric. Just make sure that that interfacing is tucked inside. Once the dress is done, I can put her arm on. The last piece is the bonnet. and I do want to put a little piece of ribbon on it. Sunbonnet Sue is now done. I will be using the original 13 blocks that I acquired over 15 years ago. Each of the 13 blocks are a little bit different, but they have been trimmed down to nine and a half inches so that they will turn into a nine inch block. I will be pairing with this 12 very simple blocks. These big pieces are three and a half inch squares. And that center piece is three and a half inches. These little corner units start off at two inch squares. Now I did do a long strip and then cut them up to make the four patches. I've chosen a white fabric as close as I could to match with this white. And I'm going to have my yellows pointing in. Once you have your little four patches done, you can sew them together and make rows. And then those three and a half inch blocks will go together. I like to take the four patch seams and press them towards the center, which means the blue seams are going to come out and these are gonna come in. 
and all those seams are going to nestle together. And that's going to give us 12 of these very simple blocks. They will be put together in rows of five. I will need three rows where I have three sunbonnet sous, so I have one on each corner, and two rows where sunbonnet sous is in the center and those finishing blocks are on the outside. Now I can sew these together in rows. So the row with three sous are going to be on the top and the bottom. When all the rows are sewn together, these secondary blocks put sous in a bit of a circle. So it's very much like an Irish chain. There is a way we can do a border that's going to continue that circle around her. As we go around the outside of the quilt, wherever we have a sunbonnet sou, we're going to need a portion of this block. So it's going to be the piece that would normally touch her if we had another row. So it's this unit. And it will get to be stitched right up at the top. And as we go along, we're going to need these three and a half inches by nine and a half inches to match these little units. And by using these partial blocks and the solid blocks, it's going to continue that curve around Sunbonnet Sioux. So we can put these all the way around. It won't matter how many pieces you have in the quilt. Wherever there's a Sunbonnet Sioux, you need the pieced block. Where there's a pieced, you need the solid. As we put this pieced border all the way around the outside, we will need four corner stones and they will need to be three and a half inch squares. And that's going to finish off that border. Now we will have Sunbonnet Sioux circled even on those corners. Once this piece border is put on, we can put on a second border. And that second border really emphasizes these center squares. So we have this circular shape with these beautiful big squares throughout the center. This is a very traditional setting for a sunbonnet sou block. However, you don't have to use a sunbonnet sou. You can use any block in between. The amount of fabric you're going to need will vary on the size. But if you do want to make one that has the 13 sunbonnet sous, you're going to need a yard and one eighth for those sunbonnet sou blocks. For the rest of the white in the quilt, you're going to need a yard and a quarter. The blue for these center squares and this outside border, one and one eighth of a yard. And this pretty little yellow is a half a yard. From there, we need to quilt it and add some binding. This quilt ends up being 59 and a half inches square. And I guess after 15 years or so, it was time for me to get those blocks put together. So thank you those that asked me about the Sunbonnet Sioux. Little did you know, I had those blocks sitting there just waiting for me to get them done. Now I have to get it quilted to be officially done. Thank you for joining me today on Sew Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.